Hello everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back to my channel F1 Edit Analysis. Well, this year is going to be one in which we make our dreams a reality. So I thought why not start with a video in which I give you all three steps that you can take towards pursuing your dream about how to get a job in F1. So without much ado, let's dive into it then. Well, the primo step is networking. Well, this is not news, but I'll tell you the harsh reality of how most of us network. We land up going on LinkedIn only when we want to search for a job. Otherwise, normally we don't give a damn. And that's not right, guys, because you will only be valued if you bring value to people. It's as simple as that, right? So you need to be a bit more active on LinkedIn, you know, post something about your work, post something related to your field, and that makes you discoverable. And the moment you're discoverable, you might show up in my network, for example, and I, and I might like the things that you're sharing. So the someday that you send me a connection or you message me regarding a particular doubt about something related in F1, chances are I will reply to that message. Chances are I will accept that invitation. So be discoverable on LinkedIn and the only way you will be discoverable and you'll get replies to those messages and those connection requests will be accepted is if you bring value to other people. So go out there and be regular, if not every day, twice or thrice a week, post something that might bring value to others. That's your first step. The second thing that you can do is take up tech projects. So I've been doing a lot of student counseling lately and one of the things that, I, that people come to me with is, oh, you know, I tried for this application but it did not work out. What can I do to improve? And what I see students do is take the path of applying to another team and with the same CV or with the same cover letter or slightly change the CV and cover letter and hoping that this time things would be different. And the reality is it will not because Formula One is basically a space for the top notch engineers, right? And you need to be the best of the best, if not the best um, to get into F1. So what I would highly encourage you guys is to take up a small project in which your fundamental understanding improves, i.e. grow your competence. And by growing your competence, you will end up speaking in the language that the interviewer speaks to you. Let me give you an example. So if you take up the, a small mini project of analyzing a front wing in ground effect, without ground effect, and then introducing a tire um, in the simulation, you will suddenly start talking about um, you'll start talking about multi, you know profiles. You will talk about the gap overlap effect in profiles. You will talk about the boundary layer losses that come from the ground. You'll start talking about the front wing uh, tip vortex or the foot plate vortex and how it interacts with the tire. You will start talking about the adverse pressure gradient that the tire introduces uh, when you introduce it into the front wing simulation and how can you improve the wake of the tire using the vortex systems from the front wing. And this language that I just spoke in is the language that your interviewer would normally speak in because these people work on F1 cars all the time, right? So these kind of mini projects really, really help you all to speak in the same language as the interviewer. What happens is most of the times in Formula Student, our processes are already set up. So you don't really spend a lot of time um, understanding the process of how um, and what the specifics were about the simulation and um, you just land up changing a couple of things and you think you deserve to get into F1, which you do only if you put in a little bit more hard work. So I would highly encourage you guys to take up mini projects and there's a brilliant opportunity by the way currently available. Airshaper has gone out to build an open source three, um, F1 car, which is basically built by enthusiasts, giving in recommendations. So why not become part of that community? I would highly recommend you all to go and give your ideas and work with them to improve their car because that's what you're going to do when you get into F1. And the terzo step, that's the third step, is connect with fundamentals. Yes, I know I've spoken about this in my other videos and trust me, I'm not going to repeat the same thing. Rather, I'm going to give you an insight 
that I learned when I was counseling one of the students. So this student uh, was talking with me uh, with respect to some of the interviews that he had answered and some of the questions um, and the answers that he had given them. And I started telling him that if I were in your place, that I would answer this question in that specific way. And that was basically me using the fundamentals towards the problem or the question that he was asked. And that is what I really mean. What I'm trying to say is if you are asked a question about a nozzle or a diffuser, um, then you should be really talking about diffuser angle. You should be talking about vortex systems, the pair of vortex systems that come about in a diffuser. You should be talking about expansion ratios and technical terms which are related to that specific problem you know from the fundamentals how can you start answering the question that you've been asked in your interview so that is what i mean whenever you are asked a question in an interview what you need to do is not tell them fancy stuff you need to tell them how this problem can be solved using the fundamental and trust me that would really impress your interviewer so what do we do to make our fundamentals stronger I would say read technical papers because technical papers are a good playground in which fundamentals are associated to an academic or an industrial problem. In addition to that, my personal favorite is reading uh, PhD theses. I mean, some theses are so beautifully written that they are just gold mines. So go out there, read every CFD thesis on F1 cars or stuff in which there's wind tunnel experimental uh, data available read them because they are literally gold mines and by reading them maybe a couple of times you will really start understanding the language in which you should speak in an interview and that can really help you out apart from that follow f1 technical posts uh, i mean some of it is banter as we all know but some of it sometimes actually makes you think why not and i think that's a very creative and healthy process and trust me a lot of people in F1 also follow F1 technical. So you see, if these guys are following it, probably you should too. Not for ideas, obviously, but just, you know, to sneak around on what their competitors are doing because the pictures on them are quite nice, aren't they? And then um, the last thing I would love to say is read classic aero books, especially books which kind of connect you, connect the fundamentals with an application. So Anderson is a great example uh, because these books give you know they teach you something fundamental and they say this is how it's applied in a real life situation so these tips hopefully should help you guys out so these are my three tips and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video i'm looking forward to hearing from you guys what steps you guys are going to take in 2023 to make your dream of working in f1 a reality if this video has brought you value give me a like and give me a subscribe until then this is F1 Aerodynamicist.